happy Saturday, everybody. You're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. My name is Rene Q. Boating, and today is going to be extremely special. It's all about the winning woman. We'll be right back. Our winning woman today, I've been, I've been chasing her like since the beginning, I think since last year. <laughs> She's one of the busiest women, I have to say. Mrs. Tucci Goka Ivoi, I'm so, so, so happy to have you on today. You're very welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for making time for me. I know you had to make time. Tucci is the deputy CEO mm -hmm. and founding member of the Ghana Commodity Stock Exchange. Congratulations on your new position. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about it, because I know some people haven't heard about it before. Okay, so the Ghana Commodity Exchange, it's essentially like the stock exchange, except that instead of the trading of stocks, we're helping to trade in commodities. Okay. Um, we decided to start with agricultural commodities, okay. and in the future we can look at other things like metals and minerals. Okay. Um, the company is currently owned by the government of Ghana, mm -hmm. but it is established to be a PPP, a, a public-private partnership okay. um, in the long run. So. Well, Congratulations. In a yes, congratulations. I know you're you're one of like the most experienced female business leaders and you've done so 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 well. Thank you. Tucci, I've I've been admiring you from from a well, not a distance because I know you <laughs> so from a very 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 close but I've, I've really really just loved your hard work I've always seen you as such a hard working woman I remember when you were living in Indonesia because of Nestle mm -hmm. um, and if I can um, boast a bit Tucci was an executive director of Nestle Central and West Africa Limited I mean that was I know that took you all over the world and yes. that kept you so 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 busy so welcome back home to Ghana thank you and well done on what you're doing for our economy that's fantastic. So, for those who don't know you, I know a lot of people know who you are, they've been to a lot of your, your workshops, your talks here and there, but for those who don't know you and who are inspired by you, I just want us to talk a little bit about you and your journey sure. and how you got to where you are today. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about your background, your childhood. Okay. Um, I actually grew up in England. Um, it's good that I say that because when people meet me, they always ask me, where are you from? In Ghana. And I say, I'm Ghanaian. They say, no, you don't look it. Um, but I am 100% Ghanaian. Um, we grew up in the UK um, and I came back here. I actually came to Ghana on holiday mm -hmm. about 17 or so years ago and I never went back. So that's kind of... Is that how you, <laughs> is that how that's you how I landed here. Planned. I didn't plan on it. I came with oh, one wow. suitcase on holiday. I thought so I'd spend three you? months. What, what made you decide to Everything. Stay? Let me start with the sun. <laughs> I love the sun. I certainly wasn't missing London because of that. Um, but honestly, I saw so much growth. Things mm. were moving so fast. Every day, every week, every year, you could see change, you could see development, evolution. And I wanted to be part of that. When I first came, I said I was going to spend three months on holiday to get to know this country of mine you know, better. Yeah. And I fell in love with it, and, and that was oh, it. Wow, One thing led wow. to another, and 17, 18 years later, but I'm at still that, here. At that point, um, you know, because it's very difficult for, for people to move back, people living you know, abroad, because the first thing they think about is like, you know, the currency, mm. like you know, how much they're going to earn. Wasn't that, was that established? Block. Did you think about it knowing that you probably wouldn't earn in the beginning what you were earning there? I was earning, when I came to Ghana, I earned probably 1% of what I was earning in the UK. Yeah. So this is probably a very good place to start. Um, mm. Uh, you know, I'm already doling out a piece of advice, but I'd say you have to love what you do. Mm. I did work in the UK, I earned a lot of money in that job, um, and it was something you could rise quite quickly and be paid very, very fast. Some young people had six houses, honestly. Wow. Um, so there was a lot of opportunity. But if you don't love what you're doing, you're not likely to be very good at it. Um, I came here, I was, yes, discovering Ghana, but I got into a job which I loved. Um, before I moved to Nestle, I was actually working for a communication agency, okay. and it's Nestle who approached me because I, okay. they, they were one of my clients. We got along very well, and they asked me to join them. That's and very quickly, I mean, I, I, I rose in the ranks of Nestle very quickly. Every one, two years, um, I was getting promoted. So what started off looking like a joke with, you know, maybe 1% of what I was earning, I was enjoying my job, very mm. focused on it, and, you know, Today. So you're really, really driven and pushing yeah, on. Yeah. Wow. Now, I am, maybe this is, you, you will be given a lot of advice to women out there, but this is a point where I would like you to speak to 
fresh graduates. Some haven't gotten jobs now because they just feel like they are degree holders, mm -hmm. master's holders, maybe PhD holders. So they're just looking at the amount. Right. You know, like what would you say to somebody watching now who is just sitting down looking at the amount and not what they're doing or what they're going to do or what they can do? I'm so glad you asked that, Renee, because I get so many people coming to ask for advice. Um, they're starting out their careers, but their ambitions are already here. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they have done nothing to earn, you know, anything yet. I'd say humble yourself. Um, you just don't know where that great opportunity is coming from. It might start where you're not earning anything at all. If there's mm. something you're interested in, if there's something you're passionate about, be prepared to even start as a volunteer. You know, um, so many organizations are willing to keep people on even when they had no intention of hiring because maybe they were not ready to add to the numbers. But when they see someone with potential who they believe is going to add value to that organization, believe you me, there's always a way. Even in Ghana? Even in Ghana. I'd say to any young woman, mm -hmm. um, whether you're a student, just finished school, whether you've been looking for years, or even if you're an older lady, but you know, you're struggling to find something that you really love, just be ready to humble yourself, to go somewhere, to learn. Um, you might enter a, an organization as a volunteer. Sometimes that's not so difficult. I know how difficult it can mm. be to find jobs. People send their CVs everywhere. Right. Um, and they may go to friends, family, friends, relatives. And that's not always easy yeah. to be able to give someone you know and love a job. But, you know, they might be prepared to bring you on even as a volunteer. Yeah. You'd be very, very surprised. You'd go in as a volunteer. If you work hard, if you can add value, if you show what you can bring, you'd be so surprised to find that the organization might be willing to actually take you so on and give you a position. Is even like a, a gateway, really, because you probably will not be in there anyway. Mm -hmm. But once you are in, you shouldn't have the mindset of a but You know, some people, mm -hmm. some, I've been to, and I'm saying this because I've been to certain organizations here, and then you see certain people and how they work, and they will tell you, oh, I'm just doing national service. Mm -hmm. So to them, it's, it's just, it's mm -hmm. nothing. I'm in a hurry to finish this year and go out. But then if you're doing your national service or you're volunteering or something, and you're doing it with, you never know who's watching mm -hmm. you. And I think mm -hmm. that's what I'm getting from what you're saying, which mm -hmm. I like, mm -hmm. that it, it could it probably give you like a huge opportunity. It really can. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I do believe that personally, I've probably taken up to 20 people who've come in, really? in, 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 in like that. Um, so yes, go for yeah. it. Work as if you're working for a million bucks. Do it with all your heart, and you just might get the opportunity of a lifetime. Wow, wow. So you don't regret moving to Ghana? Not at I all. Just <laughs> love it. I, just, I just really love it. And I'm going to make sure this goes on YouTube so that everybody out there, diaspora, <laughs> you all have to come back, come back and bring yes, it all back We need home. it here. Yeah. We really, really yeah. need it here. Now, what do you think about mentorship? Okay, and working with women here okay. in Ghana. You, and I'm saying here and there, because so that there's a comparison and so that those who don't know can learn. Okay, what has been the difference since you moved back home, working with women here and also with men? Okay, um, on mentorship, I'd, I'd like to say two things. Mm -hmm. One is I'd maybe first use the word role modeling. Um, right. I'm a very strong proponent of role modeling. And I say this because if you don't have women to look up to, women who are succeeding, who are doing it well, who are respected by all their peers, men and women alike, who give you something to aspire to, it can be quite difficult mm. because you don't really, you can't see yourself yeah. in that position. Um, so role modeling is extremely important. You may have a mentor who can give you insights and tips, but if you actually haven't seen a successful woman in action, it's difficult to you know, know how to, to attain to that. So role modeling is really, right. really important. Right. Mentorship goes such a long way, mm. um, but I'd say, you know, when you're considering mentorship op options, you should look at women, but you should also look at men. Okay. Um, and I say this for two reasons. Women can understand what other women are going through. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at things like childbirth, uh, marriage, yeah. sometimes to move up in your career, you have to be prepared to move out to another country. Yeah. Sometimes oh, wow. within one organization, there are only so many levels at the top. So. To progress, you sometimes yeah. may have to go for a bigger role in another country, mm. and that's why a lot of men are able to move quicker because yeah. they're willing to expatriate. Mm. For a woman, asking your the husband family, to move with them, the family, children. it can yes, be a lot more yes. difficult. So getting advice, getting insights, getting learnings um, from a female mentor can be really, really valuable mm -hmm. and very helpful indeed. Mm -hmm. Um, on the other side, don't rule out men because men play such a big role. Mm. If you think about the fact that, yes, in boardrooms um, and executive committees, most likely you're still going to get the majority of them being men. True. It means that the decision-making 
is largely taken yeah. by men. So if they don't understand women and they can't also put in a word for you, it's still going to be difficult for that one woman in the boardroom to fight for all the right, other women. Right. So look at this mm -hmm. as a holistic thing. Mm -hmm. um, leadership is really leadership. It's not male leadership, female leadership. Yeah. It's leadership. Yeah. And if you look at some of the the best leaders or some people who you might consider to be a good leader, you'll see that they have some very, um, you know, positive traits and different traits. Um, maybe I'll use the example of being empathetic. Right. So people say that women, women, uh, <laughs> you know, are naturally <laughs> nurturers. They, you know, have children. They're very empathetic. People, yes. You know, so they might be able to bring teams together. Um, and then men are just very assertive. Mm -hmm. Let's take Obama, President Obama. Right. He knew how to make tough decisions when he needed to, yeah. but at the same time, he's he known was. as somebody who could yes. walk in your shoes. He was very warm. Mm -hmm. was, and these things combined mm -hmm. make a good leader. So don't think that it's one way or another. It's women, it's so men. So can you learn it's, to be a leader? You can certainly learn. And I'd say, you say you Because I've seen a book, you are born a leader. What do you think about, what do you, what do you think about? Are you born a leader or can you learn to be a leader? If we take leadership to mean influence, because what is a leader after all? Mm -hmm. It's, you know, somebody is leading and people are following. following yeah. People are not going to follow a title. People are usually going to follow somebody they believe in, someone whose right. values they relate to. Somebody someone, making like a positive impact. Exactly. Right. You know, so when you look at it like that, I don't know who's born yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Um, and these are values that you develop, embody, you right. live, yeah, you develop them. So yes, there are some traits of leaders um, or so-called traits that come more naturally to some than others mm. that we can buy. But if you really look at leadership as influence, then yes, you can grow into, in, into leadership and you can you know, learn some of those traits. Mm. Not everyone will be good at everything, right. but you can certainly you know, develop yourself further. Okay, I don't know why I'm being led to ask you this, but you know, I'm just thinking about failure. Mm. Right? I know how successful you've been in your career, the whole journey. You've just been rising and rising and rising. I mean, at least that's what I know <laughs> and that's what I've heard. But have you, ever, have you ever been hit by something you will call failure? And how did you overcome that? Oh, so many times. I, I, I think um, probably one of the reasons I have risen so fast is because I've never really said no to a challenge. Mm. Sometimes my first instinct has been to say no. If I've been asked to take on a particular assignment in another country, it's a very difficult one. Um, you know, it's almost <laughs> impossible. And I think, well, why am I going to take that and go and fail? Mm. But very quickly, I'm, you know, convinced to do it. I go for it and you know, it's it, not Are you easy. going for it because like maybe you're, you're a risk taker, maybe you love risk, or are you going, you know, for it thinking and telling yourself that I will do it, I can do it? You know, so yeah. is it mindset? I think maybe I'm becoming a risk taker. You've mm. given me something to think about. <laughs> uh, but I, I think honestly, one of um, my old uh, bosses years ago said to me, be open to opportunities. You never ever know what that's going to bring. And you might find that you love this new opportunity far more than you've ever loved anything you've ever done or anything you thought you would do. Since I became open to opportunities, I've kind of, you know, plunged in at the deep end and I've not regretted a moment. Wow. Indonesia was one of the best experiences of my wow. life, both professionally and personally. But, you know, when they first asked me, I said no. I had to be convinced, um, calls from Switzerland and, and so many people. And, you know, eventually I thought about it. And when I was ready to go, then I went with the right attitude. Mm. But if you don't go with a positive attitude, then you're not likely to. So have you ever been hit by something that probably like, you know, dropped you? And then how did you rise again? And it could be <sighs> anything. Anything. You know. I mean, you don't so have to go I'd to say, what it is, sure. but just generally. Many different types of things. So on one hand, sometimes it's business. Mm -hmm. So where the results have been so bad mm. and I felt under so much pressure because I've usually gone in very young, um, going into different countries or roles where people would wonder, you know, why is she being is sent she, there, yeah, this African yeah. going to Asia, or this woman going into this role, which is, you know, exhibit, oh. inhabited only by men and by, you know, foreign men older, at that and older, older that, yeah. and, you know, so there's been a lot of pressure. And sometimes when the business results have been so low that, you know, you look in the mirror and you say, can I really do it? Am mm. I going to let myself down? Am I going to let Africans down? Am I yeah. going to let women down? Yeah. You know, it's, it, it is easy to feel dejected, especially when the results keep on yeah. diving, yeah. diving, diving lower. But you know, um, 
people have asked me, you know, what it is. I, I, you, you need to be resilient. If you're going to be a leader, you're going to be hit with these things every single day. But it's not until you go through them that you live through those experiences. I feel like I'm being coached. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't know how I am being like, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, imagine you don't go through them, you won't know what it is. And when you have a huge team to, to manage and you're not in control, you're not likely to stay in a leadership position. So actually, these things ground you, they build you, and they grow you. So, you know, there, there have been many times, there have been other, you know, personal challenges that have come along the way, death of, you know, very close loved ones, and then you're still having to steer ships in foreign lands. And so, no, there, there have been a lot of times when I felt like that. But I think, you know, whenever people have asked me, what's, if I had to pick one secret, what is it that's led me through? I'd say it's God. You know, I have a, a very close relationship with God and at the end of the day, I'm able to see through and see past all of those things. I, I ask myself, that. well, what's the worst, you know, that could that happen? Could happen? Okay, this has yeah. happened. Really? Was it that bad? Haven't other things happened? So I'm able to go through these things relatively peacefully, relatively calmly. Mm. Mm. Um, not take I'm life sure you know Jay too Shetty. seriously. He's a motivational speaker. I read one thing he wrote recently that I so love. He said, grow through what you go through. Absolutely. So you definitely will go yeah. through things. But if you don't grow as you're going through them, mm -hmm. then you're not really doing anything. Exactly. So yes, as, as, as it keeps coming, grow through them. Yeah. yeah, I really like that. Now, you're a member of the Executive Women's Network. And I did ask you about what it was like working with women. Mm -hmm. Because even I started, I have started a female group as well, female empowerment group, Butterflies and Pearls. Now, the reason why I started this was because I felt like um, in my industry at the time, mm -hmm. you know, I was one of the first professional uh, makeup artists in Ghana. Then I started doing fashion design and all that. And I felt at a point that I was being seen as an enemy by my competitors, mm -hmm. by those who are now coming into the industry. So, you know, when I speak to people now and I ask mm -hmm. them, and I like to ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I ask, like, what do you think of me? How do you take me and all that? I got from a lot of women that they find that they are intimidated by mm -hmm. other women. Mm -hmm. So somebody will read your profile and just, as soon as they read, read it, think, Tucci's not a nice person just because she's gotten as far as she's gotten. Mm -hmm. Or they are threatened, or they assume, you know, that this is it, right? So I started this group so that we could just encourage mm -hmm. each other, so we can complement each other, so we can, you know, promote each other and all of that. Then you just see each other as an inspiration and Absolutely. not really an intimidation. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was asking that what is it like and what has it been like actually working with women mm. sometimes the same women don't even want you yeah, to rise yeah. you know in my you experience know? it's actually been very positive mm -hmm. um it, again goes back to the thing about role modeling what you see you often will mirror um, mm. I mean, starting with my mother, who's a very positive woman, and looking at her and her I attitudes and, and, and so on. <laughs> um, so even women I've worked with, you know, Frida Duplan was the MD yes, of Nestle yes, Ghana. Yes. When I went into Nestle, I started at Nestle Ghana before I went to Central West Africa. She was there, a very positive woman, one who wanted to help other women and even men. Um, so it was good to see something like that. Um, I, I, Executive Women Network, again, I think, there are many um, objectives for this group, one of which is to just advocate, you know, helping women to um, move in leadership careers, but also looking at equality in terms of right. education right. and access to education mm -hmm. and things like that. But you'll find that there are a lot of women who are at the very peak of their careers, working together, trying to encourage others um, to, to come into the fold. So I think the mindset is gradually starting to change. Women are beginning to see other women as less a threat today than they were even 10, five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's one. Where you have uh, women who seem unapproachable, I think it's the, the onus is on us to actually encourage and draw others in, just as you did with butterflies and pearls. Mm. If I'm standing somewhere and a young lady comes up to me and I'm not smiling, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to help yeah, the cause. So yeah. as, as we know this, as we know what we've been through to, to get to where we are, mm. we should actually open ourselves up. Um, so I really believe in mentorship. Right. Is why I started this um, mm. Smarter Leadership yes, Program. Yes, I want you to tell yeah. us a bit I about that. I think we that. have to be proactive yes, about making leadership. others feel better. Yeah. Yeah, can you yeah. tell us a bit about that? Sure. Smarter leadership, yeah. So it's, I follow um, you as well, so I know <laughs> what you. you're doing. It's essentially a coaching and mentoring program. Um, I, I did a talk a few years ago, um, I think 
first time I did it was in Nigeria at Wimbis, um, and it was talking about leading in tough times mm -hmm. and you know what it takes to lead in tough times, be able to get the results and manage you know turbulent times, but working with resilience and still getting those results. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked in tough times. I was sent mm -hmm. to Guinea. I, I, I worked in Guinea at a time when the macro economy was at its lowest, wow. um, and I was leading at the the country team there. And then oh, Ebola, you? Ebola, oh Ebola struck. Oh Ebola goodness. struck oh, while I was Guinea, there. I thought you were in London. I was in Guinea at the oh. time. Oh time and you know so I've, 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 I've had quite a bit of experience in these things and you know one thing was coming to me that you need to be smarter if you were already smart you need to find ways to, to become uh, even smarter so mm -hmm. that you can ride these these tough times so smarter then came to mean sincere being sincere in leadership mm -hmm. if you're not sincere if you're not authentic mm -hmm. no one's gonna follow you people see through um, fake right people right, uh, to, right. just to put it that simply you need to be motivated mm -hmm. yourself if you're going to motivate others Other during tough times this is the time when everyone the whole yes, team is yes, going to be down so yes, if yes, you're yes. going to be down forget it you might as well shut up the company and go home so you need to be motivated your team mm. needs to see you motivated so that it can help yeah. to bring them up as well um i talk about artistic so acronym it's become okay. an acronym, okay. yep. Okay. So S, M, and A yeah. for artistic or creative. Mm -hmm. You need to find you know, other solutions. You need to be innovative. Yeah. Um, during tough times, things are, it's not business as usual. You need to so think and come else. with something yeah. new, whether it's new business models, new yeah. solutions. Um, R is for resilience. That's okay. probably the, the critical yeah. one because you're you need to up. stand firm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you give up, you're not a leader yeah. and there's no one to yeah. follow you. Um, T is for tough. So here you talk about, and when you ask about women and traits, there's nothing wrong with being tough. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to give a tough word. It's called tough love sometimes. That's what mothers do to the... <laughs> I don't have a child yet, but you have, you yeah, have a yeah, child. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes yes. you give tough love, mm -hmm. but you do it out of love. Out and, of and, love. Yeah. And at the wanting end of the, the day, best. wanting yes. the best. Yes. You need to see the best come out of people and you need to see that positive change drive the organisation. So when you need to make a tough call, you need to make mm. it. Even if it's going to affect them in the short term, yeah, it might... In the long, in the long term. term, it's better for them and even for right. your organisation. Mm -hmm. E is for empathetic, mm -hmm. so yes, okay. at the end of the day, even if you're tough, you can still be, you know, walk in someone's shoes and be respectful, mm -hmm. know how to understand what people are going through. Sometimes right. they may even be, you know... Doing what they're doing because they're going through exactly. something, that's so true. Exactly, that's and so then true. I'd say R is to be respected. If you do all of these things, if you walk the talk, you know, roll up your sleeves when the work needs to be done, and oh, you do everything, <laughs> we're together in that. <laughs> And you do all of this with integrity, you're likely to oh, be to, to be respected. When you, you so do what, these is it things. a group that people join or is it like workshops that you run? What is it? So it's essentially workshops that I run um, for different levels, um, kind of foundational levels for those now entering leadership, okay. more advanced levels for those who are a few years into leadership. But I also help because I have a lot of quite a few mentors, mm -hmm. mentees, sorry. Mentees, okay. um, and I and I give them some of this advice as as I go along as well. Oh, so wow. yeah. So let's say there's somebody, there's somebody watching, mm -hmm. thinking, I can't believe I'm watching Tucci on here. I love her so much. I follow her on social media or something. And they're thinking, can I be a leader? What, what, what is the secret? What, how do I take that step? Speak to the woman okay. out there. Tell them I've something. I've said to, and this, I, you know, at the risk of repeating myself, because I say this time and time again, I say, if you want to lead, if you want to have influence, if you want to go places, focus, work hard. I believe in working hard. I started working a part-time job as a kid from the age yeah. of nine. Work hard. Don't focus on that ladder and climbing up the ladder. Focus on the results. Those results will take you up. Mm. It's not you looking at the but ladder. I've never been pressured though because sometimes you get that. Sometimes you actually get, you know Ghana, you're living in Ghana now. So we're talking here in mm. Ghana and the work culture here, the family culture here and everything. Sometimes you can even get a family member, your own dad, mom, maybe even your spouse, say to you that, you know, are you still earning this? Are you still doing this with your degree and all? After I've paid for your education, is this what you're doing? What do you do with pressure like that? Um, so I'm, I'm not earning anything near what I was earning then. It's been like a catapult. And that's why I say you may start with one dollar, but you could end up with a million dollars. So I mean, the different roles I've had over the years, I'm actually very comfortable, if I can mm. put it like that. Mm. Um, and I have so much support. Um, if you look at where I've been through the different organizations, where I am, people would normally, could take 20, 30 years to, to get yeah. there. 
Um, and there's nothing wrong with that either. I say that everyone has their own race, yeah, you know, they yeah. have their own path. This just happens to have been my path. Mm -hmm. So no, my family is extremely proud, um, both my nuclear family, but also the extended family. Mm -hmm. So I don't get pressured at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I also have the most supportive husband. Yes, Any true. new venture I go into, um, even just discussing my general business ideas with him, you know, sometimes he's researching and saying, oh, oh have wow. you thought about this? Yeah. Have you thought about that? And I should mention here that he actually lives and works in the UK. So we're managing oh, wow. this, um, wow. you know, well, relationship. So it can be done. It can be done. Yeah. He's 100% supportive and it's a, it's, it's a right. really, it's a partnership, right. it's a friendship that we have. Your mental health, okay. Um, there's a program that I'm a part of that is happening um, next month. Okay. Yes, and it's going to be a mental health like discussion and all that. And I'm so glad that now people are coming up and talking about it. It's such a stigma here in mm -hmm. Ghana. You are depressed, you are mad. I mean, and it's, it's really, really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And it's a tough, tough, tough thing. I know that you started a mental health foundation. Now, what led you to start that? And what would you say about mental health? What, what advice would you okay. give to women out there? I'd say this is probably one of the passions I've had since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, I remember going to school and honestly, I was a nerd, Renee. I, I, I st I'm still a nerd. If you look for me, if you look for me any day, I'm somewhere with a book, you know. So even at school, I was a nerd, but I don't know how it came to be that I was one of the most popular girls in school. Really, I don't know, it's because I, I didn't do can it. Can I tell you, can, can I tell you, you're probably thinking, where did she get that outfit from? Let me, let me tell you, okay, so that's it. Thank so we can you, move Renee. On. Okay. You know, so it, it, it was just the case. I was in the center of it all, had people looking up to me, and I was a nerd, so I used to see all the other nerds in school. Mm. The poor people, the ones in glasses, the ones who were being bullied, and mm. it really used to get to me. So, you know, I'd I'd, I'd always defend them, so this was my thing. Mm. So I had, I was friends with the whole school. Um, at a certain point, I don't believe there was any bullying because because I was the popular one, yeah. and I was able to then get the others to stop bullying these kids. Yeah. It was a nice, you know, environment. And so ever since then, I've had something for people who are in less fortunate mm. positions, less privileged positions. Um, and, and that thing is real. You know, you can lead people to depression with yeah. things like that consistent taunting, consistent bullying. bullying. Mental health is just so broad. We could never even talk about it mm. in a day. It includes things like depression, bipolar disorder, uh, so many things. Um, so I just thought, okay, let's get the conversation started. You mentioned stigma and it's probably the, mm. the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. This is all over the world, stigma, mm -hmm. but particularly in Africa, yeah. where people are then not proud to, yeah, you know, shamed. they're shamed yeah. to have family members. Yeah. So once I went to visit um, a couple of years ago at Kral Psychiatric Hospital mm -hmm. and um, you know saw the conditions, I also realized that some family members will send people there. Um, I saw one little girl who had epilepsy. Epilepsy is not, not a, a mental not, health not, no. illness. But they sent her there, so for a few years she's there, and then no, she but why develops. Did the doctors, you know, take her though. She was dumped there. So what they do, oh. yeah, what what the doctors and nurses do is they try to find the families and send that, you know, help these kids or mm. adults and into help to integrate them back into the community. Right. But they have it, it, this is a process mm. that can also take years. Mm. Um, and after a, you know a number of years of being in a facility like that, you know, you kind of have that? to untrain. Oh so there are so many things, and 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 I just felt led to at least start to. To, to you know the dialogue going get as many people to understand be less judgmental and rally around the cause mm -hmm. that's just kind of the beginning we also need to obviously look at things like the laws which are going to yeah. help those yeah. who are suffering from mental health illnesses mm -hmm. so at another level this is a work that I'll be so doing. So what do you get them to talk about actually things that they are going through or what, when you say it, the dialogue, what, what are you The like? dialogue first is amongst the public. So it's okay. spreading information, educating people about different okay. you know, mental health illnesses mm -hmm. from the mildest to okay. the strongest, okay. um, letting people know what to look for. Okay. You have a lot okay. of friends, you have a lot of women mm. coming maybe to Butterflies and Pearls and you know they might all look happy and confident because they're trying to model themselves yes, on everyone yes, else, yes, all the yes, successful yes. women, but deep down there's something going wrong. But you know that's what actually led me to start coaching, right. really, that's what it was. I was a makeup artist, a designer, so people, but, and I noticed that the women who sometimes wanted so much more, when I could see they mm. didn't need it, 
they were hurting mm. within them. I found that I was actually like a retail therapist. Mm. So they were actually coming to me just because they, they needed somewhere to go to. Yeah. So I'm really glad we are talking about it because we have to, but how do you, my Suicide goodness. rates yeah, are, are going it's, up. It's, Students it's, on campus are, mm, you know, increasingly mm. killing themselves. And sometimes people are not able to recognize the signs. When we say, oh, I'm depressed, we say it a bit lightly. Yeah, yeah I'm down. Yeah, yeah, you're you're down, down for a few hours for a day. That. That's not depression. But if it's consistent day after day, week after week, it's not changing, probably you need to seek mental health. And if you have a friend or family member who is, you know, exhibiting Showing these symptoms, signs, yeah. don't belittle them because you just never know that. Just maybe you don't have to say anything at all. Maybe you just give them a hug. Maybe you let them know you're, mm -hmm. you know, you're there. Yeah. That one little gesture might be the difference between that person staying alive, you know, that the, the next and day and the person leaving wow. uh, the earth. So I think it's just to let people understand. So one is, you know, awareness creation amongst mm -hmm. the public. Mm -hmm. And then two is that we're starting to look at advocacy and how we can um, improve the, the laws, move I, from a legal instrument an into a public. <laughs> <laughs> So. I'll call you <laughs> but you're doing so much. I know you do prison ministry as well. We can't even go too much into mm. that. But you're doing so, so, so many things, including like empowering people and all that. Tucci, God bless you. God bless you too. That's what I want to say. Yeah. God richly <laughs> bless you for your good work. You're doing an Thank amazing you. job. We'll be right back. So we are back to Chi, and this is a gift I have here from Yaz. That's so nice. Okay, Yaz is one of my biggest sponsors. They are really, really, really pushing me to speak to women out there by sponsoring the show. Right. So thank you so much, Yaz. I can't thank you enough. Thank you. And now they're giving each and every one of my guests a, a package. This has so much in it. It has, what, sanitary towels in there. It has liners. It has so many things. Toothpaste, mm. so many things. So this is a gift from Yaz. Wonderful. And we must say thank you to Thank them. you so and much. And thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Really, today has been so special, really, really special. And I have a special gift for you. Okay, so now this is the Rene Q Love Pillow. This is something Ooh. I've started to start a movement of self-love. Self okay. okay, so I, I want like every woman out there to have one of this. So to buy it for yourself, buy it as a gift for somebody else. And sometimes, like you said, in that moment when you're feeling down, where you feel like nobody loves me, mm -hmm. well, that's the time you should love yourself. Yes. Now, I think that when you find and you keep telling yourself special things about yourself, you will stop looking out mm -hmm. for love because you just feel like I am enough mm -hmm. for me. And this is what this is about. It's beautiful. So this is a gift for you Thank to cheer. And I want you to tell us one thing you love about you. I love the fact that God called me to him. Um, mm. And it gives me all the confidence, all the riches I need to go through day by day. Um, and honestly, um, I think living without confidence can be quite hard. So I'm, I'm just so grateful that I have this confidence in my life. And I love this heart. So I'm going to oh. carry it with me and I'm going to make sure I share some of the love with others. Oh, thank, thank you, you Renee. So <laughs> You're very, very, very welcome. Thank you so much, Tucci. It's been an amazing show today. I am so inspired and I hope you are too. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Today's Woman Show. I am so inspired and I hope you are as well. One thing that I really want you to take with you today, you are today's woman. You are a winning woman. There is no giving up. We can do it and we will. Have a lovely weekend, everybody. And don't forget, join us next week, Saturday, 11 a.m. on TV3 and on DSTV channel 279. And thank you so much to my sponsors who make this possible, to Yaz Sanitary Pad, thank you so much, to GTP and Rene Q Love Pillow for spreading self-love. Love yourself, really, and you will be confident in who you are. God bless you, everybody. See you next week.